Day eight of the historic impeachment trial of suspended Attorney General Ken Paxton. This was the defense day, and we're looking live into the what's a courtroom, the Senate chambers at the Texas Capitol, bringing witnesses to refute seven days of testimony. That's the defense team that Paxton abused his power and broke the law to help Austin real estate developer and campaign donor Nate Paul. Fox 4's Sean Rabb continues our coverage. He's been here all week. Sean. Yeah, and we've heard from former senior staff in the AG's office since this trial began. Today, current staff who testified General Paxton did nothing wrong from the termination of four whistleblowers in that lawsuit that ultimately brought brought this impeachment proceeding to an open records request released to Nate Paul and his attorney about FBI and DPS raids at his home and businesses. We see a lot of procedural irregularities. Um, these are pretty unique, though, in the way that they in the way that they came in. The head of the attorney general's open records division testified there were procedural violations and irregularities in how the FBI and DPS replied to open records request from the attorney for real estate developer Nate Paul. This after both carried out search warrants on Paul's businesses and home. Some of the FBI responses completely redacted, so Paul's attorney would not know how to challenge why the information request was being withheld. There were two open records requests, one in 2019 and the DPS request in 2020. Justin Gordon said the office considered the irregularities, quote, unique, close quote, so they did not agree with them. Was any information disclosed to Nate Paul as a result of OEG's ruling? No. Then we move on to the big request to DPS in the spring of 2020. Was any information released to Nate Paul as a result of that ruling? No. And then we get to this third request. And what we see is that the FBI provided a copy of the brief directly to the requester itself. Is that right? That's Objection right. leading. Oh. Prosecutor Leah Graham wasted no time trying to show how Ken Paxton was heavy-handing the release of protected information to Paul, his friend and campaign donor, through those public information requests. Mr. Paxton did not summon you to his office to talk about this file? Yes, he did. He did not put pressure on you to either not, really, to either not rule against the requester or to release the information? No, I would not, uh, I would not classify it as, as pressure. In your conversation with Ken Paxton about this particular DPS file, can you recall any other time when Mr. Paxton directly came to you and got involved on a DPS open records request? No. Next up, Austin Kinghorn from the Legal Counsel Department. Paxton lawyer Chris Hilton tried to pull down each article of impeachment through him. A lot of focus on the report generated by the Attorney General's office clearing Paxton of any wrongdoing released August 2021. Were you ever directed by anyone to make sure that the report was a sham? No. Were you ever directed to make sure it included false or misleading statements? Absolutely not. Attorneys for the whistleblowers blasted that report at the time of its release as self-baked exoneration of Paxton. Four of eight whistleblowers filed a lawsuit. HR director for the AG's office, Henry De La Garza, testified they all had performance problems. If they're not seeing eye to eye, um, it's going to break down, and then it eventually starts trickling down, and uh, we start losing you know, efficiency, and there could be worse problems. In cross-exam, prosecutors pointed out all four were separated from employment within six weeks after going to the FBI. Prosecutor Daniel Dutko ending his questioning with a touch of sarcasm. Have you ever heard of the expression, there's no coincidences in Austin? Pass the witness. Uh, that phrase, no coincidences in Austin, we've heard since opening statements by lead defense counsel Tony Busby. Wednesday, this note for you, House managers filed a motion that would change the rules and would automatically prohibit Paxton from running for public office again if he is convicted and removed from office. Today, that motion was redrawn, withdrawn, meaning now if he's convicted, there will once again be an additional vote to decide if he would be banned from running for office again.